Hello rail fans and welcome to this video that showcases the best of each of the Class 1 American railroads we've captured in 2020. First up is an Amtrak train. This is actually the only Amtrak train we were able to catch in 2020. This is on June 15th in Irondale, Alabama. This is the Crescent on its way from New York to New Orleans. Next up here, we've got a BNSF coal train. We captured this one on September 23rd in Whiteside, Tennessee. We actually did this on a trip we took to Dalton, Georgia, uh, which is one of the rail fan road trip episodes you can catch on the channel. Uh, we were coming back from Dalton, really hadn't seen a whole lot in Dalton. Uh, we're coming up I-24, uh, just outside Chattanooga, back towards Nashville and saw this BNSF coal train creeping across the interstate on an overpass bridge. So we got off the next exit, uh, which was the Nickajack Lake exit, and we doubled back. Uh, this is actually the second place that we caught this coal train. It was uh, raining that day. Um, as you can see here on the camera, unfortunately, a, a raindrop has gotten on the GoPro lens, but uh, the first place that we caught this at was actually up a one-lane um, really country road that went straight uphill towards the tracks and we were able to stop and take some footage of the front of the train but just didn't feel really good about the position we were in we were right um, right up at the crossing uh, everything was downhill uh, had anything happened it wasn't going to be a good outcome for us so just decided to back out of that and went further up the road and were able to pull into a little gravel uh, area on the side and, and capture this footage. Um, selected this one, you know, we probably saw somewhere between 5 and 10 BNSF trains over the course of the year, but I think just because of the surprise of seeing this one in this area, plus having two on the head end and, the, and there'll be two uh, DPUs at the rear, um, you know, all of them pretty nice clean units. So uh, we did see um, uh, you know, a couple of the war bonnets later in the year, uh, but just thought this one was probably the best one that we saw for the year.
And so next up here we've got a Canadian National locomotive. This is actually on a CSX line uh, trackage and a route. It's uh, K444. Captured this one on December 2nd. This is an empty ethanol train headed back north towards the Chicago area. Picked this one just because of the locomotive on the head end. Uh, Canadian National 2508, which is a C44-9. Uh, pretty interesting locomotive. First one of those units that I have seen. Um, it's got a four windshield uh, layout in the front as opposed to the more traditional two windshields you'll see. And then the way the bell is mounted um, outside the front of the cab, hanging down in the middle of the windshield. Uh, just an interesting looking unit. Um, had a nice uh, Canadian National uh, unit is the third leader as well. Um, and so this one was our favorite Canadian National of the year. up next is a Canadian Pacific uh, train. This is actually the first Canadian Pacific that I had seen. This is way back on June 28th, which is about a month after I started making these videos. Uh, this is at the National National Cemetery in Madison. Um, had two really nice clean Canadian Pacific leaders. I also really like this train, not to uh, take away from the Canadian Pacific aspect of it, but that third unit up front, CSX 4025, uh, is an SD40-3. It was originally delivered uh, to the l &N Railroad back in 1974. Um, and so that, that unit has seen action as an l &N, as a seaboard system, and now obviously as a CSX. So uh, definitely an interesting consist at the front and was pretty happy to uh, finally see one of these Canadian Pacific trains. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is my selection as my favorite CSX train of the year. Uh, obviously living here in CSX territory in Nashville, a lot to choose from. Uh, literally have seen hundreds of CSX trains this year, but this one is from the morning of August 15th. Uh, it's the first time that I ventured any further than Springfield up the Henderson subdivision. When I left the house that morning, I had mentioned to my wife how badly I wanted to see either A, a uh, continuous welded rail train or B, one of the windmill trains and actually managed to see both of them on this day for the first time. So this obviously is a continuous welded rail train. Um, just because of the aspect of telling her as I left the house that I would really like to see one of these soon and I didn't know when or if I would and so far this is still the only one I've seen. Uh, kind of made this a special day. So this is outside of Adams, Tennessee. Uh, at a nice little crossing with some area to pull off to the side and park. Uh, sat here for eh, a little bit of that day and, and actually captured the windmill train here too. And here we have our selection of our favorite Kansas City Southern locomotive of the year. Uh, this one was pretty simple, much like Amtrak. This is the only Kansas City Southern unit we'd seen. Interesting little backstory here. We saw this one on the 30th of November. I uh, got word on Facebook that it was coming south on the Henderson, so we first caught up to it at North Caskey and then caught it again at Trenton and uh, a couple of other stops along its way back uh, into Nashville and further south. But on the 28th, we took a trip up to Fulton, Kentucky, to the uh, Canadian National Yard there and saw our first KCS unit parked in the yard. Uh, it stayed there the entirety of that day. We never did get to see it move. Uh, but we're pretty thrilled just to get to see a unit and then to actually finally get one on, you know, just two days later. So, you know, this was probably, I guess, a good six months into our rail fanning adventures. And uh, obviously this was the one that took us the longest to finally track down. So we're really, really excited to see this one. And uh, definitely a, a cool catch that we've had here recently. All right, so here's our choice for favorite Norfolk Southern train of the year. Norfolk Southern is probably the train line we saw the second most amount of trains from. We made quite a few trips in Alabama, Georgia, eastern Tennessee, even saw them up a little bit in Indiana. And uh, while certainly not seeing them as much as CSX, we still had plenty of footage to choose from. Picked this one. Uh, this was taken on October 30th in Cortland, uh, Alabama. This is a uh, stack train that was headed from either Sheffield or Memphis uh, over towards the Decatur or Chattanooga area, somewhere in there. Uh, didn't, didn't ever get the exact origin destination on it. Uh, but we were going uh, westbound on the road, uh, following the tracks, and, and this thing came flying by us eastbound. It took us a little bit to catch back up to the head end of it and uh, have enough time to get off the road, get the camera started. It's also a trip that uh, took with two of my sons. It was the only trip my oldest son's gone on with us. So uh, it was a pretty good day, and uh, the engine or the conductor on this train uh, was an extremely friendly guy. Uh, was waving, smiling out the window at us. So just all in all, made this a pretty uh, cool and interesting unit to catch. So this one's going to go down as our favorite Union Pacific catch of the year. This was taken back on October 17th, just outside Springfield, Tennessee. Uh, this was probably my fifth or sixth drone flight. 
uh, but this was the first train that I wouldn't have been able to get a good view of uh, without the drone. The previous uh, flights, test flights I'd had of it, uh, were trains that I was able to easily film from the ground anyway. Uh, but this was the first time that the drone served its purpose and gave me a, a shot that there would have been no way to get from the ground. So it's a pretty good shot. A, uh, again, a CSX ethanol train coming down the Henderson subdivision. I did have a little bit of heads up uh, that this was going to be coming down. So I actually drove up the Henderson, drove to Springfield, and then uh, went a little bit west of Springfield. First time I'd encountered this uh, Sulphur Creek trestle. Uh, and so wasn't even aware that this was there, but when I saw it, I realized it'd be a pretty good place to set up and get the drone out. So pretty happy with how it came out. Um, you know, obviously we've used the drone for lots of other interesting things since then, but um, this was the first time and really exciting time that we were able to use it for something uh, that we wouldn't have otherwise seen. And as an added bonus, I'm going to throw one more clip in here, uh, even though we've already covered all the American Class 1s. Uh, this is my quote-unquote train of the year. Um, caught this one on Thanksgiving Day, lots of backstory to it. Uh, if you want to search YouTube for my 100 subscriber special, uh, it tells the entire story of this day and this trip. But the Conrail Heritage Unit uh, is really special to me and definitely the highlight of the year uh, for us to finally catch up to it. So thought I'd throw this in here um, as we move into 2021, obviously looking for more great footage and, and want to track down some, some new short lines and, and some regional passenger railroads and things like that. And also really looking forward and hoping that we can see a Ferromex uh, unit at some point. So uh, while we've managed to capture all the American class ones this year, uh, would still like to knock off seeing a Faramex unit as well. So uh, we'll look forward to that and, and hopefully lots of other bigger and better things in 2021. Definitely want to thank all of you guys for your support so far in 2020. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've been making these videos since around May. Um, you know, I've been a rail fan for most of the 40 plus years I've been on the planet. Uh, but really, you know, it kind of took the uh, coronavirus shutdown uh, to drive me back towards having as much interest in trains as I've had this year. Uh, you know, early in the year we were kind of looking for, you know, a new activity that we could go out and do that didn't involve overnight travel, didn't involve being around a lot of people. Uh, we used to like doing a lot of road trips. We'd go stay out two, three nights at a time. And so as we refocused our energy and, and we're trying to figure out something that we could go and do and still be isolated from most of the world, um, you know, came across this pretty quickly. And, and also, you know, sitting there one day watching YouTube videos of trains and, and just, it, it hit me that, you know, you spend a lot of time watching these videos, why don't you go out and make your own? So, um, it's been a great year. You know, it's a hobby that uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy and, and, you know, can't wait to continue going out and filming trains and sharing them with you guys. So thanks for all your support uh, and hope you have a good, rest of the of the 2020 year and a great holiday season thanks for watching this video make sure you click on the thumbs up below to give us a like if you liked the video and also please make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already also if you get a chance check out the new website we've got over at rustyboxcar.com it's got links to all the videos and social channels as well as lots of other rail fan information for you thanks and have a good day